Hi and welcome everyone to my first ever live stream as Gaming with Jason. Thank you for joining me and today we have an open mic. I know it's going to take a few minutes for people to get in here and I'm still trying to figure this out. I have done live streams before but never with this much difficulty. Um, it's just it's being a pain in the butt uh, and very laggy but this is also a hurricane season for us as well. Uh, so I, I live here in Florida, and that is one thing that is a, a big issue for us. And so I just, I wanted to, you know, just check in with you guys and offer up a live Q&A session. And I also am going to do a little bit of a uh, playthrough here. So I, I'm just, I see that nobody showed up. I know that probably for the first few times, nobody's really going to show up, but I wanted to see it. And hey, I've got the chat up here. So if I see any questions pop up in chat, then we will go into, um, we, we will go into that. So uh, let's see here. Let us go into, I want to start with, uh, with California. So I am playing Rising Tides here, and let me just pull it up on my end. And just some things about Rising Tides that um, you guys should probably, uh, what I do? Okay, there we go. Uh, some things about Rising Tides, there are some differences, like you don't get the artillery. But as you see here, both of my, both of my guys went inactive. Let's see if they actually showed up here. And okay, right through a translator in Polish. You know what? Why don't you take it in a translator and translate it to Polish, and then send it to me in Polish, and I'll translate it into English. Um, you know, I, players that don't do that, it's like okay, you're not worth my time. Uh, if you're if you're gonna be that lazy, then yeah, you're definitely not worth my time. So let's see here. I have five units. Sorry, it's really small on my screen, and plus I'm having to sit really far away uh, just for the, the computer screen. So let's see here. Um, I have got I've got five units, and so I am going to go, and first I am going to attack him here. I thought I would have had troops here by already. Okay. So now I am ready to declare, uh, let me do this, let me put him over here, and when that happens, so I'm going to lose a city, but I'm going to take a couple of his cities, but I, did, I just got out of the coalition, they all went inactive, so I decided that I'm just going to take their territory. And as you see, I'm now at war. And this guy actually should be going down here. Come on. I need him to go down here. And so if there's anyone in the in the chat that has any questions about rising tides, I know it's a little bit different. But you know, some things I want to talk about is how you start out in a game. And as you see here in every one of my cities, if we just go here, I have recruiting offices in all of my cities. And I also have, this is the one that I do not have a military hospital in. But as you see, I have a military hospital in each one of these. And I started out with like at four and five on most of these. And as you see, they're already starting to move up uh, in in overall um, in their overall population size, which is translating into my resources here. So if you can see, um, sorry, it's uh, if you can see here, I'm getting 142. Here, let me change my view. I'm getting 142 uh, per hour on the uh, on the components, and I'm getting about 50 on the gas, and that's that's really bugging me. Uh, but as you see over here, I am already starting to build my navy, and I'm just waiting for that to finish, 
And do I have enough resources? Yes, I can actually put an air base in here. Uh, because that'll make it easier to send troops back and forth. Huh, I got another four out here, or did I send them back? Hm, I don't remember. But as you see here, I have got this. I have... Uh, apparently, did these guys get into a fight? So... Yeah, these guys are going to end up fighting over the same... Uh, oh man, that's going to suck. But, as you see here, I'm now doing a strike on him. And I am waiting for my striker to be built here. And as you see, I'm still kind of trying to keep things at home and keep things on my front lines. Uh, right now, I'm not going after Free West because I want to see what he's going to actually do. Um, but this is this is kind of the way that I run my servers as far as uh, how I play a game. I went after Canada. They went after these guys. And I ended up having to come in here and help them. Uh, Free West almost lost. And if it wasn't for the fact that he had somebody coming in to help him. Because he ground down his troops going after Texas. And then, uh, and then the United States decides to come after him and he gets wiped out. And that's something to, to consider. So if there's anybody out there and you have any questions that you would like answered, please let me know. I would love to answer your questions. And I, I'm going to take a moment here and uh, kind of talk a little bit about uh, about channel business here. Um, here. All right. And so just some channel business. You guys are going to start seeing some things show up on my uh, on the channel and it's not going to be con related so con conflict of nations is my primary game that i play but as you see you can only log in uh and play uh every so often like every couple of hours you got to come back and check and if you're wanting to have a game where you sit back and you play and you you have uh some personal time uh and you really want to you really want to just sit there and uh, play out, you know, multiple games or be able to play this game and play other games because, you know, some guys, uh, you know, some of us guys, we may be single or we just uh, may just kind of be loners by ourselves and we just want to sit back and play a game. And so playing this is great, but you want something else that's going to fill your time because if you sit here and stare at the screen, you're going to go mad, I promise you. And so uh, here as Germany, let me go ahead and start showing you a little bit of what happened. So you guys saw earlier today where I posted about my uh, my playthrough with uh, uh, with Germany and just starting. And so if you have any questions around that, definitely, definitely, uh, you you can ask those questions. Uh, and and I'll try and answer them as best I can. But let me kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. Man, I lost. What did I lose to? Hold on, let me check this out. Where is... There it is. So let's go through here. First, uh... Lost, 1st Infantry Battalion, defeated by 9th Infantry Battalion. How were they defeated by the 9th Infantry Battalion? Huh. That's a little strange. Maybe he had one extra unit there, because I sent four in. And as you see, I am... Oh crap, I'm still level one. Okay, so that it makes sense. <sighs> okay, but uh, Sweden, he hasn't done anything. I mean, I can go here and show you inactivity. Oh, now he's on. Oh, no, 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 he's still... Uh, let's see about the United States. Let's see if the United States and France. So what happened is we all got attacked at once. And so we couldn't... We were attacked by different coalitions. Uh, and because we were attacked by different coalitions, we really couldn't defend each other. You had to hunker down. Now, as you see, UK is winning here. I am going after Norway because Norway took uh, Norway decided he wanted to come after me, so I I came after Norway. And then, uh, as you see over here, Japan's doing fine. But if you look over here, the United States has pretty much he, he's 
he's losing he's lost a city or two he's going after him and he's still got level one I don't really anticipate him lasting very long uh, so him being here let me just make sure to if I unkicked him no so yeah both those and then uh, France I, I don't really expect France to survive the night but when when you guys ask me about Germany and you're saying hey you know we've got Germany here and we'd like to know how to start it <clears throat> it doesn't matter what country you start in Europe if you start in Europe in the traditional sense what I'm used to what I've been playing in this game it is a mere bloodbath having getting out whoever wins isn't going to get out with more than 30 35 units uh, in, in a traditional bloodbath so sometimes what happens is Europe comes together and unifies but only one of them actually stays active so that makes Europe easy to take uh, however that doesn't always happen what ends up happening is that Europe ends up splitting into two separate coalitions part Warsaw part NATO and then they end up fighting it out because it, they're stepping on each other. And whoever wins that bloodbath, they merge together and you have the European coalition. But they're so weak by that time that you have like India, Saudi Arabia, Russia, uh, maybe even Africa. Or if the United States or somewhere in South America, they decide that they, they want to come over here. Uh, if you look at one of my other games where I'm Japan, all of Europe was just, it was a bloodbath. They all took each other's capital cities all at once. It pretty much is what it seemed like. And so when you're dealing with Germany, the most important thing to consider when dealing with Germany is that if you're in Europe, it's going to be a bloodbath. Everybody wants to attack you. And so if you do not set up proper defenses and you do not, you, you've got to play defense for the first little bit. And there are some spoils to playing defense. So for example, because I played, uh, I, I had to play a little bit, I had to counter because I was getting attacked. So I countered, I kicked him out. He didn't take any of my cities. And now I'm pushing through and countering through. And now I've got, I'm going to end up having all of Norway. I, I might offer him peace just to see if he'll take peace, but I don't think he will. If he's smart, he won't. Uh, but, as you see here, oh, hey, Beyond Dreams, how are you? Um, how do you balance out your destroyer to frigate ratio? Uh, to, to stop air naval strikers uh, gaining, gunning after you since it's quite easy to overproduce destroyers yes it is easy to overproduce destroyers so I, I have a couple of questions for you beyond uh, now you're wanting to use these uh, for coastal defense or are you wanting to use these for uh, for out in the, the broad ocean defense you know so let, let me show you what I'm talking here uh, so do you do you want like are you trying to figure out how to deal with like somebody that has a carrier and carriers are pretty rare but are you trying to talk about somebody who has a carrier and you're trying to deal out there or are you trying to deal with something in here because quite frankly if you're worried about that what you should be worried about more or less is going after air superiority and anytime you have strikers coming after you let me let, let's let's go in here and look uh, real quick uh, wrong one so let's go in here and look if we take uh, if we take air superiority fighters just a level one is going to do six damage but it's not going to do much to the the hard and soft units uh, and it doesn't do much to the population and it doesn't do anything to buildings okay out in the broad ocean okay so then what you're going to want at this point is you're going to want to have an aircraft carrier because this is going to be what really sets you apart. And this is the advantage of having an aircraft carrier. If you're going to do something like uh, and you're going to build a full on Navy, then you should be going after naval air superiority fighters. They don't give you any advantage over the uh, more like. A stack of strikes that come from the mainland to the destroyers on the sea. Okay, 
So what I'm talking about again is you're going to want a carrier, but let, let me let me kind of follow this here. Uh, we're we're on a good point. So for example, a, a navy striker or excuse me, a navy fighter to start off with is going to do 10 damage. Okay. And so we get it up here to level 3, let's say, and it's going to do 18, which is what this is going to do. So it has an advantage in the earlier rounds, but in the later rounds it does not. Um, but as you see there, and what you're going to want to do is if you're going to build a full-on fleet like this, and you want to use your navy as a spearhead and uh, to soften the targets so that your infantry can just come walk in, you're going to want to go with aircraft carriers. And you're going to want to add this to your strategy. And here's the thing. So, for example, if I have, if I have a destroyer coming after... Let's say let's say I'm coming after this right here, okay? Um, and I want to go after after this, or even let's say I want to go after Oslo. Um, you, you're kind of in an area where you have a lot of players, but if you have your destroyer here and you put your carrier here, nobody can find it unless they've got ships or radar going on out here. But it's far enough away to where you can you can put your your uh, superiority fighters there so when they start sending it you have the ability to shoot them down because honestly that's going to be you you would be better off to go with a carrier group and have superiority fighters because they're way more versatile and they have different and more uses than let's say a uh, then, then let's say uh, a frigate because a frigate you can bombard and you can do air with a superiority fighter, you can bring it inland, you can bring it outland, you can put it on a carrier, you can move it all over the place. So it gives you great versatility versus going after the frigates. If you were going to go after frigates, I would use frigates more or less for homeland defense against nukes. And let me show you here why you would want to use frigates for that. So let's say you put your frigates up here to, um, what is this, a level... Okay, so we, we put it up here to Bremen class. And if you look in here, we have, where's the missile? So four. You've got four against a missile, and then if you max it out all the way here against a missile, you still got four. So, um, yeah, I forgot about that. So you only need to move it up here to a level four because that's what you're using it for is mostly for missile defense. So if somebody sends an ICBM at you, okay, so um, I don't have any here that I can show you, but an ICBM is going to take 15 hit points, and then the warhead itself is going to take another two hit points. So you want to have a stack of five of those um, to take out a, a, an ICBM. You can take out any missile at that point in time. And if you really want to add a little bit of protection, you might even want to consider putting bunkers in your city. Because bunkers will preserve your buildings and your troops in the event that you're getting attacked. So Beyond Dreams, I hope that answers your question. I know I went a little bit off on the different Navy, but when you're playing Navy versus land, it is a completely different game altogether. And here, let me... Let me see if I can really correlate it to you because I've been thinking about doing a video on this and this may end up being that video. And when you want to use Corvettes, Corvettes is something that I would use if I were like in here or if I were trying to protect this little area here or maybe even on the inside. It's to protect against troops and their transports. It's not to do anything else major. Um, uh, you know, either that or something like that in here, just again to protect from your troops. It's supposed to be something like that hidden, that hidden item. Whereas when you bring a frigate, most people use frigates, and what they were originally intended for was for heavy air fighting. But it's very rare that your ships get bombarded. If they're going to get bombarded with anything, they're Anybody who's intelligent is going to use either naval strikers or they're going to use uh, air uh, naval patrol aircraft because you start off with a seven. Uh, compared to, let's look here, 
uh, to a naval strike fighter, oops, which is here, which is only going to give you five. So you get an extra two, plus you get more range, uh, and it goes, it keeps going up from there. Uh, the the naval patrol is your long range bombers to protect from a naval threat. Uh, whereas if you're going to use this, if you're going to use a frigate, the only way that I've seen is is feasible with the way that gameplay is today is through using it for missile defense. Your destroyers are predominantly what you're using them for is for subs, ballistic missile subs. Because as you see here, you get a 10 against subs. Versus if you go over here to a cruiser, which is meant for naval battles. So if you're going to do anything, if you really want to create a, a, a decent navy, and you want to do something that is effective and not wasteful of resources, what I would strongly, strongly suggest you do is that you probably go with mechanized infantry, and armored fighting vehicles or or Bradleys, okay, it, depending upon which doctrine that you're using. I would use those, and I would make sure to get them up here to level 4 so that you can airlift them. It's the only reason why you want to do that, because the tanks, it takes till, like, level, what is this, level 7? And that that is too long. If you, you need to be able to, especially if you're planning on Navy, you need to be able to have an airlift. And then what you're going to do is you, you are going to build destroyers for your sub hunting. And I would use them more as siege weapons. Uh, I haven't really looked at them. So you get a 2 and a 2. And I think you get a 3 and a 3 with the cruiser. And with the cruiser, you get more range. But the offset to that is, is that the destroyer gets more range. The only thing that the, that the cruiser has when both maxed out is it's damage it does an extra okay so it does 20 and i think it does 15. so it does an extra five damage against ships but then you've got to ask yourself if i'm going to go after cruisers that means i expect that i'm going to have to assault somebody i'm going to have to go through and and go through a heavy naval battle now if you're going from uh, America to Asia or Asia to America or you're going from South America to Europe that would be something that that I would say okay yeah you're gonna have a definite naval battle but if you don't plan on having a naval battle you'll want to have naval patrol instead of your cruisers to offset your destroyers and then you're going to want to have an aircraft carrier and here's the cool thing so with this aircraft carrier when you first start out you get five but then it does quick upgrade, so by level 3, you can now put 10. And then, this is something else that most people don't realize, you can also put 15. So that means you can have two superiority wings and a naval patrol. You can have a naval patrol, a superiority wing, and, uh, and a naval striker. You can have ASWs. You can have whatever you want on that uh, once you get three wings and I've actually maxed it out and but that was because I was going for a full-on Navy so what I would do is I would probably have one or maybe two cruisers at most with a destroyer fleet or a, a task force create no more than two task force have a have a carrier to support that task force and you should be plenty fine and if you build naval patrol just to just to protect yourself at home in case something gets through your your net but you know here's the thing when you start playing a navy game that encourages other people to start playing a navy game and so what you're going to end up having to do and what i had to do when i was japan because i keep getting nuked by a disgruntled player is i had to go through here and i had to search through every single which way and it took it took a, a day worth of my time to do, and it took about four to five days worth of game time to actually go through. Now, I did find the find him. He happened to have another one that he pulled off of USA. He's just going after me for whatever reason that he's going after me. So, um, uh, Beyond Dreams, I hope I answered your question. If anybody else has any questions and if they would like to learn a little bit more about Navy... Uh, just ask. Uh, I'm not a Navy guru. 
Uh, there are people that are better at Navy, but that is something that I am looking to shore up. Um, let's see here. All right, so we are coming up on 30 minutes. I figured if I had a if I had people interacting with me, that I would uh, that that I would keep the stream going for an hour. If there's not a lot of people interacting, I will start it off at 30 minutes until we actually push it up to an hour. Because I'm sure a lot of people might want to come in and watch this. So some things I wanna I wanna pull up as channel business while I'm waiting either for another question or until I get off on another topic is um is that uh, at the what, what's going to end up happening with this channel is again you know you log in every couple of hours if you're playing four times speed you, you make a little bit of move and then that's all you do you, you go off you go about your merry day now if you need a lot of time like that like during the week that's you know that's what most people do when I owned my janitorial business that's what I did is I would check it in the morning when I woke up I would I would give myself an hour so that I could check my three servers and then when I got home at night I would check my three servers again and then I might play it and then check it a couple more times before I went to bed just to be able to make sure that everything went well but for those of us that have a little bit more free time or that want to be able to have like a full-on geeked out gaming day I'm hoping to to expose you guys to some other games I will be doing a little bit of tutorials they will be under other videos and I, I'm I want you guys to stay here I don't want to tank the channel by bringing in other content I want to bring in content that is going to complement this channel and its viewers and help you guys fulfill your overall gaming experience because at the end of the day you always are looking for new fun entertaining games to add now this it's my favorite game it's probably your favorite game but again you know I play medieval dynasty when I'm not playing this I just bought a new game called uh, battle cry of freedom it was released on like March 2nd it is an MMO. It is a first-person shooter. It is. It's not. It's an open world, but a cl but a very small open world. Unlike like let's say Medieval Dynasty, you could roam the whole map, do whatever you want. Uh, <clears throat> you know, create whatever reputation. It's a different experience every time. And so I want to be able to expose you guys to these games because I think it will uh, probably enhance your gaming experience. Maybe you might go, oh, I want to try that. Because I was never really into simulation games until I got into Medieval Dynasty. But it's pretty much the best simulation game that I've come in contact with. Um, I was not into MMOs until almost 15 years ago. And I found an MMO, played it for a couple of years. It evolved past what I wanted it to do. And so I spent a lot of years looking for games. I just went back to the old games that I knew about. But since you guys are active in the community and you want to go around and look at games I'm hoping that I can expose you to some games um, and so I, I just want to set the stage for that so that as you guys see Battle Cry of Freedom or Medieval Dynasty or uh, Leave No One Behind uh, Ladrang which is another game that I'm planning on getting 